podcast get started we want to thank all of our sponsors 3b construction and roofing your choice healthcare Lori's dive in dpf alternatives and they have a new address by the way it is 288 eatington highway gray georgia 31032 nobles networking project k9 hero who is a lifetime sponsor of the show if you would like to figure out how to be a lifetime sponsor of the show please message me now cotton field grill pearl promoting Back Road Park and Event Venue. Don't forget November 10th and 11th. We are over there for their Veterans Day celebration. Friday night is Tristan Baugh and Confederate Railroad. And on Saturday is Miss Ella Langley and Trey Lewis. I will be hosting the event. It is going to be an awesome time. Do not miss out. Tickets are available now. Cashman's Pub down yonder Hatco. Deep South Chemical, and we're bringing back an old feature that we haven't done in a while. Our Spotlight Song of the Month, an artist spotlight, is on Mr. Hunter Mounts and Kyle Austin. They just put out a song called Collar Greens. I really, really like it. I'm going to play it for you in a couple weeks whenever these boys come into the show. So do me a favor now. Go follow both these guys on social media and download our Song of the Month, Collar Greens, by Hunter Mounts and Kyle Austin. Better than basic uh, Miss Erica does our website. She does all our graphic design. She does everything for us. Please go check them out now for any of your social media needs, marketing needs, whatever. And check out the Josh Terry podcast.com, our official website. Grab some merch while you're there. And please leave a review and rate the show if you love this. Please help me grow. All I need you to do is take five minutes out of your time, go to Apple, Spotify, however you listen to the show, and leave a review. Leave us five stars. It helps us more than you know. I'm grateful for each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for making the show what it is. Now, I'll stop with the business side of the show now, and we'll get to talking. Thank y'all for listening. Enjoy the show. Thank y'all for tuning into the Josh Terry Podcast, brought to you by Raising Grace Studios. Uh, uh, Please go check out all of our sponsors. You just heard their ads and stuff before the show. Also, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Buzzwax, who just sent me a shit ton of drugs in the mail. I don't know how I'll get away with it, but thank you. Uh, I ate one of those mushrooms before we started this, so we'll see how this shit goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, I want to introduce everybody to uh, these two right here. Um, I have followed them for a while on social media. They're the happiest fucking people I've seen. They're unapologetically themselves. Uh they're just cool as shit, to be honest with you. Uh, I want to introduce you to Mr. Travis and Mr. Chris, the girl dads from TikTok and Instagram. Hello, Hello. how's it going? How y'all doing? Y'all worry about that glitch that keeps happening? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. As long as your audio is fine, I don't give a shit. All right. You're good. Well, we'll, we'll fix that. I, I probably won't put this all out on YouTube anyway. It's probably just audio, and then we'll clip it out for social media. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I want to tell y'all something before we get started. Uh, YouTube are the cutest goddamn thing have ever <laughs> fucking seen. Like y'all just adore each other. And it's obvious from your videos and me as a dad, who's a girl dad too. Uh, I love how you are with your daughter and yeah. I, I just love seeing it. And when uh, I saw y'all recently with Dimps, I think, or yeah. something like I saw a video that Dimps might've posted or whatever. I think the world of that girl, she's always been just as sweet to me as she could be. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to them. Cause I didn't know if y'all did anything like this. And uh, yeah. when I kind of figured out you did, I was like, fuck yeah, let's get them on the show. It's so funny. Cause we've never done a podcast or anything like this. And then now like, this is the second one we've done. We have another one in like two more weeks. And then like someone else reached out to us about doing it. So it's been, who did y'all start uh, off with? Cool. Uh, we started off with uh, Kel 
Lowry from Two Moms. She does oh, okay. uh, the, Bar- the Barely Famous podcast. Okay. So we did hers. So yeah, it's uh, it's one of my guilty pleasures. Back when I was younger, I used to really like fucking Teen Mom when it was Farah and that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the 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 thicker, really attractive one from like Wisconsin? Is it Chelsea? Maybe. Oh, Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, I think I probably just watched it for her. And uh, but anyway, I, I really like it was one of those things I got roped into and was like, this is cool. I don't I don't know why I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of them girls. So raising young yeah. ones that young, I couldn't have done it. Exactly. I yeah, shit no. me either. Hell no. I'm barely doing it as it is. Yeah. <laughs> How old is your little one, by the way? So she is four. She's uh, four? She'll be. Yeah, she'll be five next June. So. Y'all have your hands full then. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And she runs the show. That's like, how it she goes. runs this house and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What did you tell her yesterday? She said he told her something about um, you don't run. You don't run I, things I here her, or something. I told her I was like, I'm sorry, you are not the adult. You do not run this house. <laughs> and she looked at me and she goes, um, I do run this house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of my daughter. She she's just turned twelve in September, and when I tell you that it only gets worse, it only gets worse. Did y'all cut uh, out? I, you know, it's the camera. This oh, there. I think it's because it has to be balanced. I think it's not good. Can we? Can we just? Okay, we're just gonna switch to. Yeah, because you're not even gonna have the camera anyhow. Oh. <laughs> okay. There you go. We're just gonna switch to the. What do you call is it? Is it better? I like this camera better. Anyway. It is better. But, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what you started with, but this is better. That's that's me well, it's because of to pick a camera. For it's this. this stupid cam link thing. It it always gives us problems. If I think you said that y'all are thinking about starting a podcast, mm-hmm. if y'all do, let me know. I'll show you how to set it up the the correct way, the, where you don't have a lot of issues and you don't spend a lot of money. Well, because yeah. like these uh, Twitch and YouTube. Um, creators that give this advice don't give very good advice here lately yeah. so <laughs> well that that's my thing i started off in country radio so i had a little bit of knowledge of working some shit and then going over to starting my own studio uh three years ago it was where like i had to learn a lot of shit on the fly and didn't have i had investors and stuff and people that was part of me but i didn't want to spend thirty thousand dollars right off the bat yeah. so i learned how to do it and how to do it the professional way but not going fucking insane with the price yeah like, like i told you we're extra as hell and so <laughs> when like we do something we're not just gonna do it like we're gonna do it yeah. like and i have yeah. a collection of mics light stands it's kind of yeah it's kind of sad yeah i would have never thought y'all were extra from your t-shirts <laughs> never <laughs> never would have got that what uh tell them about your business before we even get into anything so basically like when what no. What? <laughs> Every time I'm just like, I got tricked. I got, I kind of roped him into this. He didn't really want anything to do with it. So, um, we started off doing like just children's bows, like, you know, the bigger, the better Southern bows. I hate those damn and, things. For, on and, behalf uh, of every Southern dad, fuck you guys. Cause that, I <laughs> no, hate them fuck damn him. thing. Fuck him. Not I me. hate I was, him. I loved them, but I hated them. And then our yeah. daughter didn't even wear them. So, how that even why we kept going with it i'll never know yeah um but then basically a lot of the moms were like we want matching shirts for the bows because we had reps like we had he started like repping for another company and then they left and then he was like i kind of want to start it and i was like well do it like i mean we both were in real estate like he's a real estate agent i was um, a mortgage lender at the time and so quarantine was happening and we were both here all the time and i was like shit just do it like and so he ordered fabric and started it. Well, he got a bunch of girls to come like join our rep team. And then of course it wasn't like, it was very quick. Yeah. I imagine He says they asked for matching shirts. But we all kind of like, just, you know, <laughs> kind of collab together to get him to do it. <laughs> yeah. None so, of us down here, but I'm talking about all the, all the women do. I mean, if you are a, it doesn't matter if you're white trash or high class. A southern woman's gonna put a bow on her damn kid's head, mm-hmm. and each mm-hmm. one of us are like, "Why?" They're gonna yeah, rip it off in thirty minutes. Exactly, and that's what she did. And so we we tried doing like different styles with her, but I finally just got tired of fighting her to do it or wear them. 
But I mean, some of these moms will pay crazy money for these yeah. bows. Like, yeah. you'd be shocked. There's this one shop. They literally charge like eighty dollars a bow because they're so popular or something like that. And I'm like, shit, not not for a child, you know? Yeah. Let's nah. Get a third on the fucking ground yeah. and stomp on it. I I grew up poor, and so everything Dang. gets passed down to my kid is from my upbringing. It's like, nah, you're lucky you're not getting Walmart clothes still, shithead. <laughs> like you're you're spoiled. As it is, you're not getting anything like that. But some of these women don't give a shit, dude. They'll pay whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that's kind of like too uh, where we kind of started progressing to more adult stuff. Was we noticed like, holy shit, we'll spend this amount of money on stuff for a child before we'll even treat ourselves. So we figured if we could do mini and me, then oh, sometimes yeah. a parent that normally would never buy anything for themselves can at least match their child, and it's kind of like that same. Yeah. What is it? I know, I know what you did. You found out what <laughs> you found out white bitches had money. And you were like, We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna attack that. I know what yeah. you did. Oh, yeah. That's no, smart. We found out we found out that they had money. They liked to spend the money on their kids and they liked to match the kids and we were like, Yeah. 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 E every dad hates you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like there's ones like there we still have some of like the original ones that are still like, with us on our like that still do our stuff. And their husbands will be like, can you fucking stop yeah. making <laughs> shit? And I'm like, no. I literally heard, overheard this conversation. I went to Target uh, like two days ago. Uh, I'm spoiled now. I grew up not having like a lot of shit. And now that you have shit, like you don't realize what you missed out on. So like betting. Yeah. Like I'm huge on betting now. Like about every six months to a year, I'll buy brand new sheets, comforters, all that kind of shit. And in Target the other day, I heard a frustrated husband talking to his wife over on the sheet aisle. And it was just like, it doesn't fucking matter. You're going to change it in two months anyway. Just buy whatever the hell you want. Here's my card. I'm walking out. And that's what I feel like listening to you guys say <laughs> they bought another fucking shirt. She's just going to yeah. do it anyway. I'm going to yeah. give you my card. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> If they don't go out of business, I'm going to own all their shit. Like, exactly. Yeah. So how long y'all been doing it, that though, since COVID? Yeah. Yeah. 2020. It was, yeah, March, February, March, 2020. Yeah. And it just, it kind of snowballed. Like, well, well, because nobody could go out shopping. So their instant, like, I guess, fix that they were getting was shopping online, shopping off Facebook. Yeah. So we started on like Facebook. So we had our website. But like we had, we have a group on Facebook, like a VIP group, and so we start that. Oh my god, I'm still there. It, what, I think the, it looked like the power just blinked, so I'm like, so Wi-Fi is gonna fuck up? <laughs> not. Okay. Hey, you're fine. Uh, I mean, this this sounds fun. It wouldn't be my show if there wasn't technical difficulties. I'm just letting you know. So don't worry <laughs> it about it. It wouldn't be us if there isn't technical yeah. difficulties. Oh, yeah, it, you're you're fine. I'm all I I all kinds of checky and shit. I can do all kinds of shit, but. And always there's that fucking eye roll it. again. <laughs> that, I was like, I, I'm telling you, that, <laughs> that eye roll from Travis is death. <laughs> Shit. Y'all two you see me when I actually get mad. Like it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to see y'all get mad at each other. Uh, we like we're we're really different in a lot of ways, but we're like the same in a lot of ways. We're both petty as hell. So <laughs> when we're mad. Like everything's out the window. See, like I'm he, coming for you. Like we're like we're just gonna talk all of the shit. What's sad is he plays the short game. I play the long game. Yeah. Like yeah. I like if we're gonna go to bat, but I'm gonna save that one card from three years ago on that one day that you forgot about. And then I'm just gonna roll with it. Yeah, because I don't remember roll. shit. Yeah. The the, oh, the listening audience for this show is 70% women and every one of them is like, I know exactly what the fuck is talking about right now. <laughs> like, do I really want to win this one today or do I want to win the next one tomorrow? And me, like, once, like, I, I'm like most people, like, we can fight and be cool. Like, okay, I don't understand men-wise. Like, obviously I am a male and I don't understand how, like, he can be mad and then just be, like, perfect, like, Met pissed off at me right but then just like cordial and happy go lucky for everybody else and i'm like no if i'm mad everybody around me is gonna know i'm mad and we're all gonna be mad together like how are you just gonna sit here and be happy over there like trauma that's what i'm telling you it's a trauma because it didn't matter how the fuck you felt when you were in front of other people you smiled you shut up you did not talk you said yes sir no sir you shook a hand and you went sat down and we're quiet One that's me it's like i'll walk 
I'll walk away. Like I'm gonna like when I'm mad, like I just, I walk away. Like just give me a few minutes because I'm I'm gonna start saying some shit just because I'm mad. I don't even mean the shit that I say, but I'm gonna say some shit to make you cry, and then I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna be like, "You're an asshole for that." And yeah, I get to a point like my bad. I get to a point when I'm that mad that if I'm not by myself, I'm gonna start taking low blows that I didn't even want to take in the first place. Like I never would, but especially if you won't stop, if you're nagging at me and you mm -hmm. just will not, I'm like I'm fixing to hurt your worst insecurity, and I don't even want to be that way. But you won't fucking hush. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm a nagger. Yeah, so. I can't stand that shit. I've dated, <laughs> I, I, whoa, I've dated both types of women. And I would rather you go ahead and just knock me out with the one fucking worst thing you can say and us drop it, leave it alone. Both egos are crushed and let's just <laughs> move on. That one, it just keeps fucking nagging, boy. Oh my God. I hope I never date one of them again. <laughs> See, but it makes it not boring. Like there ain't ever. It's, well, that's what it makes me even more mad. It's like he'll sit there knowing that I'm so mad and worked up that he intentionally does it to where I just keep going. Yeah, I I, I, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> sometimes part, I do. Sometimes, I, sometimes I'm like, all right, all right. I was probably going to say, it's probably just you're so aggravated with him already that everything he does aggravates the shit, that shit out of you more. <laughs> that too. You, you're breathing way too loud. You're, you close that door way too loud. Yes. I've had a woman tell me I was breathing too loud before. I have a deviated septum, and we were on a road trip together. By the way, don't ever go on a road trip with somebody if you know there's a fucking chance of an argument in the first hour, <laughs> and you've got a day's drive. Worst two days of my fucking life being nagged at repeatedly. Yeah, but I got deviated septum, so I breathe with her. I'm a mouth breather. I can't help it. I sound like shit when I breathe. And she like literally got so frustrated with me. She was like, I just wish you would fucking choke already. I'm so <laughs> tired of hearing you breathe. I would have fucking been so quiet the rest of the time. One word answers and just, oh, I would turn the car around. And I'd lock the windows and I'd just blow that bitch up. She was hot or it would have got turned around. And she was a yeah. very attractive woman with no morals. I was, <laughs> I was not fixing to turn that car around. I was hoping for the best, and it ended up the worst. Uh, but anyway. We always end up getting into it be right before we leave because we're both so, like, kind of on point. Like, like we, there's shit that, like, we know, like, what needs to be done. And we're all, we're, it's like, we're always running late. So we're always like stressed. And so we'll get into an argument and then we have to drive for hours together. And it's like, absolutely not. Well, uh, that was awkward. So <laughs> how, how long have y'all been together? Oh God, I'm going to mess this up. Since 2016. S seven years. Yeah. Nah. Yes. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. It's good when you both men and you can't remember or count. After a certain amount of time, you're just doesn't like, matter. you know what, it is what yeah. it is, yeah. It like, doesn't matter. That we have a sign that's on our living room wall that's like when we first started dating, when we got engaged, when we got married. So anytime I like think of like, shit, what year is it? I just walk by and look at that, and I'm like, okay. And then I yeah. can remember Smart. it. Smart. In my desk, there was a girl I used to date, and she was she's a very good person, but she was a little crazy. And she knew that I couldn't remember that shit. She got me a bracelet, and I can't remember the company or whatever that we got it from, but on the bracelet, it had the, like, the longitude and latitude of our first date, uh, like oh. the, the the Applebee's or whatever it was. Uh, it had the day we <laughs> went on our first date, and, like, all this shit. We dated for a year, and it was just like, I don't – some people are just overboard with that shit. I really don't think it matters yeah. after a point as long as you're together yeah. and you're happy. Yeah. I think it's good, like, when both of you especially don't – really know for sure because it's not like one of you's an asshole like it doesn't care both of you just don't remember well that and too it's like there's so much to already keep up with that as it is the exact number i mean yeah. like the dates are important sometimes like obviously anniversary and stuff like that but after a certain amount of time it's just kind of like I'm stuck with this old goat over here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh chris are you older yeah how old are you i don't even know how old y'all are i'm 35 and i'm 31 I'm aging like shit. I'm 36. I I, I thought I thought y'all were both. I thought like way closer to 30, like or under 30 for you anyway. Uh, 
I'll right. take that compliment. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are like, this it's because I have a hat on. If you see my hair underneath it, it's gray as hell. Gray I don't have any hair, so it doesn't matter. I've been bald since I was 16. So it, I started it, turning it gray at 18. No shit. Yeah. So that's distinguished, though, right? Like, I, I think gray looks good as shit. No, it's so funny that you say that because so I, in my mid 20s, uh, my friend that would do my hair, I'd get my hair cut every two weeks. And I try to talk to her, like, come on, just. We, I don't want to change the color. Just get rid of the grays, like some just for men or some shit. And she was like, no, she was like, it makes you look distinguished. She was like, I, she told me you can never pay me enough money to color your hair. I'm sorry, but I think it would be looking weird if you had like, your roots growing out. <laughs> well, I mean, now, like it would, then but also. it wasn't like as bad. They weren't as great. And now it's just, it, it would be so fucking noticeable if I got rid of my grays because there's so many. Yeah, I, I'm almost like I'm I'm like redheaded, so or like red beard or whatever. So like I look like a calico cat all over my body because there's so <laughs> many grays and red, like it doesn't go good good together at all. Uh, but anyway, what um? So when did y'all start doing the social media stuff during COVID? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was like, so like as far as COVID goes, social media wise, like real estate and stuff. But I mean, you did vines, but not like in this aspect yeah um i think the most as far as like social media wise would be we started with like when we first started in general let me put it this way uh we started off as like a blog yeah and it was going to be like diy and like pinterest mom or pinterest dad or whatever you want to call it and like and just then, the journey of like the, going through our adoption so yeah and then yeah. once once we found rep life and started the shop that's pretty much when was COVID. We were born. Yeah, and... we weren't really doing like TikTok. Uh, like we had, like I had. He didn't have it yet. I had like a personal TikTok, and so like I would watch. And then like when as COVID was happening before quarantine, I was like spiraling down like all the controversies and like the like conspiracy theories and shit. And so he, he okay. hated TikTok. He was yeah, like, I'm I was not like, doing it. I was like, why am I going to download some app where they're like telling you that they're blood harvesting babies? <laughs> <laughs> he, a... I mean, if it's I... true, I don't know. But but I... who really like us out there just like farming babies in a uh, lab? I don't know. But a lot of people that were talking about it on TikTok. That, that so. But now I kind of believe it. What's <laughs> fucked up is so funny to me. That is extreme. The right that is the reason why I downloaded TikTok. I watched a fucking documentary <laughs> that I found that somebody had posted on Facebook or whatever, and it was like in the darkness or something or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to where mm -hmm. they're talking about child trafficking and all this crazy <laughs> shit and everything. And I was like, I, it was so bad. And I got in my head so bad about it. I like I downloaded the sex predator app and I thought everybody around me was a sex predator yeah. now. <laughs> like all kind of crazy shit. And then the Q9 stuff started uh -huh. and I just went ape shit with it like I, rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah out for like a good three or four months i was probably one of those conservative psychopaths that everybody was like what's wrong with them like <laughs> i almost wanted to like build a bomb shelter and just me and my kids stay in there like all the fucking time so that's why i had like i literally have probably what 11 accounts yeah it always finds me so i don't know what i'm searching or what i'm clicking on to get rid of it i need to get rid of it but like I'll switch between accounts once the FYP gets like a little dark. I'm like, mm, time for a new one. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll spiral back. I would only watch like conspiracy shit, like just the crazy shit. I wouldn't like go around like telling people this is what everyone is doing. But you did. I would just I would tell you like <laughs> <laughs> you told me. Yeah. <laughs> and then so before quarantine happened, I started watching like the Americans that were living in Wuhan or whatever. Yeah. And I was showing them. I was like, look, like there's like they can't fucking leave their building. Like this is because that's when it was like starting to get here. And I was like, I think like we're it's we're gonna lock down and then sure well, enough. Remember that one night I woke up, I had like a hundred and four degree temperature. Couldn't even like my whole body was like aching, right? And it only lasted twenty four hours. I woke up crying and I was like, We're all gonna die. You need to get out of this bedroom to save her, you know, like <laughs> run. Before they announced that it was COVID, I was still working in radio. I got deathly sick for about 12 days and like they wasn't the flu. It wasn't whatever. It was COVID mm -hmm. before it was COVID dude. I literally thought, cause it just started being announced right around that time period. Like in March of 20, man, I thought everybody was going to die too. I was like, if this is how I feel right now, 
everyone's yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah. I I did lose two family members through it, but I mean they also had underlying health yeah. issues. But like I I just remember the fear that was in. Like I was I mean it was terrifying because like she was just still not even what one. Yeah, she wasn't even a year old yet. So and so like I, that kind of fear is a little bit different, you know, like as parents versus like you know not that it's not scary, but. That was my biggest fear was her getting it. Yeah. And so then like lockdown happened. And so we were just here. Like I was, we were both working from home. I wasn't going to the office. And so we just kind of threw ourselves into the shop. We were like, we'll just do this for however long this lasts or whatever. And then we'll go back to normal shit. And so then I started seeing like other small businesses posting on TikTok. And I told them, I was like, I think we need to start an account. Like and start posting shirts. And I, I started doing it like on my personal and then we decided to it was october it, i i created the girl dads yeah well it was your personal account yeah and then we just made it into that and we had it as a business account at first and then we switched it because you didn't get the good sounds yeah so it was kind of boring and then once we switched it i swear to god when we switched from facebook to tiktok i can't get off the damn app that's a problem but i love it i'm not gonna even complain about it yeah, <laughs> yeah i wish i didn't i like was so against it for the longest time. I was like, I'm not going to download something that my daughter has. Like, that was always my mindset. Like, it's the kid's app. Then the day I downloaded it, probably, I went down a severe rabbit hole of the dumbest shit, women, mm -hmm. comedy, country music, everything. I've been hooked ever since for like two and a half years now. And I, and I hate that people, when they say, oh my God, you're literally on a kid's app. It's like, honestly, it's really, I don't really see that many kids' kids, you know? Yeah. But it was intentional. Well, I think yeah. it was. I think it was glorified as a kids' app at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and then I think it quickly transitioned. I think it quickly grew into some what it is now. Yeah, and so we started. We just started posting, and like, I mean, it we it took us a really long time to like build things. We it took a little bit to get to a thousand, and then we started going live every night. I would work on orders, and we would go live every fucking night and i just in the garage i just work on orders um when he would get her down like he would come out and sometimes like depending on the weather we'd bring her out and i mean we would have six people in it to think we were on top of the world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then it just kind of like grew in a little bit and then we got um i don't remember what why we decided that he was watching a live i don't know if it was so I think Katie was the first person, uh, Dent was the first person that we sent stuff to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was like, I was like, I love we this girl. Send her like a shirt or something. Yeah. I, there was something about her. Cause like, you know how the old days, early TikTok days, Dent's like the kicks, all that. Yeah. And I was like, she's a single mom. She's hardworking. She just has fun. I like her energy. And I was like, let's, let's see if we can send her something. But getting her attention was so hard because she would have like thousands of people in her yeah. life all the time. And then we got to know her on a personal level. And... Well, I ended up emailing her. And I was mm -hmm. like, fuck it. I told her, I said, fuck it. Like, if we're going to do it, let's just do it. I'm going to email her. Because we, like, at the time, we still were just like, like, it's, it's, I felt awkward doing it. Yeah. Uh, still feels cringy. Yeah. And so then I just emailed her. And so we did that. And so we got, like, attention from that. And then we just kind of started just. Then Cookie. Yeah. Uh, Mama Cookie, we sent stuff to her. Like, it kind of built. Because we're super picky. Like, we won't just. If, if, I don't care if you have like 5 million followers. Same. Like we're not, if we wouldn't hang out with you in real life, we're not sending you shit. I'm not sending yeah. you shit for free if I'm not going to like hang out with you in real life. Yeah. There's something, there's something really unique about Dimps. Uh, I think I might've been the first podcast that she was on like in March of last year. I think in so. Nashville. That's when I started. That's when we argued about this last night. What? Um, when we started following him, I'm pretty sure that's when we started following no. you because she said that she was going to be on it. And so then I went and listened yeah. And then we started following you. I'm, yeah. to... I'm just going to let you have this one. Good job. Well, hold on, hold on. What do you think it was? <laughs> I could have swore I caught one of your lives one day and you were getting ready for an interview. And I wanted to say you were either like in and outside or a shed or maybe I can't remember what live it was. Yeah, yeah. He's, what yeah, you? yeah. Chet, he's right. Chris is right. I'm so bad with names. Yeah. Chris is right. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't, I hate doing, I mean, I do lives like once a month. Okay. But I hate doing them. I, I it's so hard for me to sit there and talk to a screen, like and I hate not doing have, them. No. And not have it back. But uh, but when we did the thing with Dimps last year in March, 
um, or around the beginning of last year. I told her then I was like, cause she was already blowing up anyway, but you could, there's something about her that's so unique that if checks all the boxes, if you're a marketing yeah. company, like if you yeah. want somebody to advertise your stuff, there's just something about it. And then you get around her, like me and her are not the best of friends. Like we don't, we're not constantly talking or whatever, but we've been around each other enough to where we're very nice to each other. And I can text her and she'll get back with me. Um, when I say not the best of friends. She's, I just don't mean it. Like we talk a lot, but yeah. uh, she's just a really good person. And also she's, too, the single mom thing, she's a great mother and she's out grinding. I, that's, that's yeah. probably, that's the thing I love about her the most to be real with you. And me too. Like my mom was a single mom. She worked three jobs. We were poor as hell. We moved all the time for wherever was cheaper. And she, she always, even now, she still has like three or four jobs. Yeah. Always. Like she's always, my mom's always worked, always bust her ass. And so I think that was one of the things like with her was I had just, I respected it. Like, yeah, there's something hard. about, there's something about that. And I, I don't know. Cause like I didn't, I didn't grow up with a single, like in a single household, but I know just as my daughter's 12, her mother is an extremely great woman. Like it's the reason why is we ain't together is I was young and dumb and just made a lot of mistakes being a young man. Uh, but her mom was a great person, but having to see what it's like when people don't have a mom and dad or two parents, there is, there's something about it. I just respect so much that you're out there, you're providing, like you're out there doing and you're taking up the slack for somebody else, not doing their part. There's just something that's really sweet yeah. about that to me. No, my, my dad was in the picture, but uh, there wasn't very much. Uh, yeah. I think he paid my mom like a hundred dollars a month in child support or some shit. Yeah. Like a hundred dollars a month. Like it yeah, wasn't very, wasn't very much. So I live with my mom like primarily. And then uh, shit, shit. I, but too, I, like, go ahead. Oh, um, but to like, to like, we both were, we we're both work from home, stay at home dads, right? Well, I guess not, I don't, whatever term we want to call us. Yeah. But having her here and there's two of us, it is chaos <laughs> still. So doing it by yourself when they want to throw fits or throw yeah. toys at you or beat the living daylights out of you, you're kind of like, oh my God, like okay, newfound respect for anybody who's doing it on yeah. their own. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Have y'all received a lot of hate from social media? Uh, I yeah. feel like it's been it's like more here lately recent. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's literally just like trolls, just like trolls, people that won't show their face or yeah. would yeah. say it to your face in person. Um, the we've had like small shop drama, but I don't even really count that because yeah. I mean, like there's people that don't like us for sure yeah. because yeah. like we say like you're not going to catch me out here being fake. Like, I'm not going to smile in your face. Like, if I know you're talking about me, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell yep. you I don't like you. There's no second guessing if I like you or not. I'll pop off at the mouth. Whereas, like, he's a little I'm more. I'm going game. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, reason, the reason why I asked, uh, I had done a show the other day, and I had mentioned you guys were coming on. Um, and then after, or it might have been a, a, a Snapchat or something. It was something I posted because I was excited about having you guys come on. And I had a couple of people that messaged me, and they were complete fucking just morons. And they're like, "Why would you sit here and give them a platform and all this kind of stuff or whatever?" And I looked at their accounts, and I look, I'm a Christian. I'm not a very good one, but one thing I've learned is like I I ain't throwing stones. Like, yeah. and I, and I don't think it should, there has been people that have been different walks of life that have been way better to me and treated me kind and showed me love to where people that are just like me have been cunts. And yeah, yeah. I just wondered with some, with people messaging me and wondering why I would have y'all on the show. Like if y'all had received say, shit. So people like people like that aren't really going to like say it to your face. And uh, we've yeah. had a couple that are like, you know, I've, we've had, so like here lately on Instagram and again, it's their private accounts, a fake photo um they've had some like pretty grimy comments yeah but now i'm just kind of like tell if you're gonna say it say it full chest right yeah that's how i am don't I get it don't beat around the bush so it gets filtered or so it doesn't get filtered yeah. like try to actually say the word that you know you want to say yeah and just let it out because otherwise it's like it's nothing we haven't heard already yeah you know? 
Um, I feel like a reason, a lot of reasons why we get it more now too, is because TikTok took away the fucking pin of shame. The what? When you used to get that one shitty comment. You could pin, you pin the comment, and it would be the very first comment. Uh, and so then everyone would just go and rip them to shit. You don't even gotta say shit. You don't even respond. Pin it. They would instantly delete it because everyone would see it. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. when they got rid of that, that's when people, because you know, usually those comments just kind of go to the bottom. Like they're mm -hmm. gonna go lower because. But well, half, the, half. Sorry. You go ahead. We're, it, with half. us being on Zoom, we're gonna talk to each other, so it's fine. You okay. <laughs> half the people that we literally have gotten comments from. It's always typically Christian based. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't even, one, you don't even know our religion. Two, like, if this is your belief, we're also, you know, if you're pro life, we're literally taking care of an adopted child. Yeah. So, like, why, why even shame us? You know, like, so yeah. it's because they're cunts that in. and they're miserable in their own lives. Mm -hmm. that's, it's, that's what it's always going to be. I yeah. know I, whenever I got those messages the other day, I was like, I can't wait to post this episode. And one reason why I can't wait to post it is because even in the the 30 minutes that we've talked, I like the fuck out of y'all even more. Like you guys are, you're genuinely good people and you're unapologetic yourselves. And yeah. those are the folks I want on, on the show. I want those folks. I want real, how you said, I, I'm big with saying it with your chest myself. Like yeah. if you're going to talk shit about me, then please let's, let's meet up. Let's either have a beer, shake hands, agree to disagree, or you want to go in the alley. Like I, that's yeah. the way I was raised. Like I, I Same. we're we're gonna squash it one way or the other. I'd rather it be the nonviolent, respectful way. Yeah. But if if you're gonna take it that far, so am I. But I, I'm I'm too old to fight. But I, I it's still there. I will. I, I will yeah. still fight you. Like and that and that's why I wanted to post this episode. It made me even more excited about it because I want people to see y'all. Some of them bigots. Some of them fucking yeah. assholes. Like it's, these dudes are cool see, as shit. And what's wild too is like we have we have more straight friends than we even do like gay yep. friends. I guess there's like the stigma that what do we all do? Um, oh yeah. The drugs, dancing, and just, that's movies, what I do, you know, but, I mean, <laughs> and there's that's no shame. I'm not judging yeah. that. <laughs> but then there's also what I call the dinner we, games. We've done, you know? we, to be fair, we have done our fair share of drugs before we were together. <laughs> yeah. So both separately, like there, we, we're not innocent. We don't think we are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we've done we've done some shit but it's i it, i don't i'm just gonna tell you fuck you you're a cunt and i'm gonna move on like yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna i used to respond but to them but that's what's wild is most of it is only online yeah yeah like oh, out yeah. in the actual real world nobody's really like talking this mad mess you yeah. know because if you yeah, won't say it to, to my face then don't i'm not gonna waste my breath on you yeah well, i've had to deal with that lately uh someone from social media and what has just blown my mind is I'll be the first one to apologize if I'm in the wrong, like I, mm -hmm. I but it's took growth. It has took a lot. Now I used to just, I wouldn't, but I really have got to the point where now it's just easier to say sorry than to stay mad. Yeah. It's yeah. and like, if I'm in the wrong, fuck it. Let's just say, sorry, have a beer, move the fuck on. And that's the way I try to live. And there are some people that have, they'll run their mouths behind that screen on live or whatever, knowing I'm going to be in the same town with you once a month forever. And if we run into each other, I'm going to approach you. I'm let's just go ahead and squash you before it ever gets that far. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, they just keep running that fucking mouth. <laughs> it's like, I don't think you realize the way I was raised. Like, yeah. like you, you, that's not the way that I am. And that's why I try to tell people like you, you don't know me. Yeah. Like you don't know where I grew up. You don't know how I was raised. Like I was raised. If someone has shit to say, you, you fucking meet up and you yeah. find it out. Like I there was like my mom says town hall meetings. Yeah. yeah. I grew up, you know, running around like a, just a little damn badass, like no shoes on partying all the time, like driving, yeah. driving around. Like we lived in fields and shit. Like I grew up in a small town that is not like just like really country. Like, it's uh, there's a lot of it was fun like where did y'all both where did y'all both grow up at so I, I grew up in a town called bay city it's like down like by matagorda beach so i grew up like half in town like half at the beach and like my mom's family like lived down like her family has been like in matagorda since it was started so i grew up at the beach like or then in town you know it was all 
farm, farming and shit. Plants are farms. And then I basically a city rat. Yeah. <laughs> but um my but like to kind of perspective, like my parents, we moved from which is now so before I say it, everybody always says like, Oh my god, you were a rich kid. Back then the heights wasn't what it is now, if yeah. you're familiar with Houston. And so my brother started getting in a lot of trouble, tight rolls, tucking knives and stuff, and going to school. So then we relocated out to Cyprus and um and of course now that's grown a lot too. But then still like my dad came from a small town and my mom grew up in a city, but she literally says wash how your clothes. I, Why is this still... How am I just now putting that together? What? Your dad grew up in a small town like I did, and you and your mom grew up like in a city. Yeah. I, I get what he's saying. Together. I don't get it. Like, cause it they get... It's the same combo of you two. It's, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh wow! That just sorry squirrel. Yeah. It's okay. Well, it's know. okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, so we grew up in like completely different areas. Like, <laughs> I took him. We were in my hometown one time, and we had been. We probably been drinking all day. Oh, we went to a bar with a bunch of my friends, and a fight broke out. And then someone, you know, may or may not have stabbed someone else. And so, like, when that starts, <laughs> you leave. Like, you leave the bar Hello, because shit. it's. More people are fixing to roll up, and it's fixing me more than a knife. So we all know. Was I trying to buy another round? Go. He didn't believe me. He was like, "You're no, nothing's going to happen. We're the only two ones left. We're, I'm kind of like trying to get him to the back door. One of my friends was in the bathroom when it happened. She walks out, goes, fuck, what? I said, someone got stabbed. She goes, why are you here? And I said, because he doesn't believe me. And she looked at him. She said, you need to get the fuck in the truck. I wanted to now. Party. <laughs> yeah. and so he did. We literally, we like ran to the truck. We got in as we're pulling out one way. It's just a shit ton of cars. The other way, it's a shit ton of cops. It was a huge fucking brawl. I think someone got shot too. Like, and like when shit like pops okay, up like that, you in, leave. In my defense, I was three sheets to the wind. So, but he was like, no, that's not going to happen here. He's like, this isn't Houston. I was like, it's worse. Yeah, yeah. And them them small town little bars are the fucking most vicious places on the planet. Yes, you will get stabbed real quick. And I've gone to jail at that bar two times. So I was like, we need to go. Y'all are rowdy. I wasn't expecting the rowdy side. I love it. Hey, quarantine quarantine does yeah. Up. That like we used to we used to I mean, even with having a child, we had balance. Yeah, but then like being locked up and everything kind of just made us extremely antisocial. Yeah, we used to never catch us at home. Yeah, yeah. unless we were having people over, we were out. And I like I love to throw down. Like I like to cook. I like to entertain. Have people over. We used to do campfires all the time. And we we had a pool at our old house, so we'd have pool parties all the time. But now Chris doesn't even like to so leave the house. house so. <laughs> Not at all. Right. I used to never be home. Ever. If it wasn't for me having to go host concerts and shit like that, I wouldn't want to leave. I got so used to it and like mm -hmm. being, having my own studio and then own house and everything to where I didn't have to deal with dumbasses anymore. Mm -hmm. I get so tired. It's not, I don't like going out. It's I'm so tired of people. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and that's I, what it is for me. It's people. Like it's, it's people. I don't like peopling. I don't like being around. I don't like crowds because half of them, like, for example, at the grocery store, I feel like everybody just moves so dang slow, too. They do. But, yeah, that's, like, I I think that's probably what kind of, like, shut us down. But also we kind of built, like, an online community that yeah. kind of is kind of, like, peopling, I guess. And now, like, we're so fucking busy all the time that yeah. you know, I don't have time to, like, go yeah. and do stuff. Like, so it's just, but, yeah, I used to be rowdy as hell. All, like, I, I, was, I was a mess. See, I, 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 I wish I could calm down a little bit. I'm trying. I'm trying. It, it's so <laughs> much fun. i those buzz things. Oh, dude. You, I'll, send, I'll get them to send you some. <laughs> I will. They are for, Have y'all ever done uh, mushrooms? I haven't. No, that, that's I, the, one of the things I, I've never done. I grew up like right near a field where all my friends yeah. used to go. After it rained, I knew one of them fuckers. Yeah, don't do, don't do those. Don't do those. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I deal uh, with like anxiety and depression a, a good bit. Like I'm a suicide survivor from like 2010 and I did the antidepressants. I did 
therapy a little bit. I didn't really, I don't really believe in therapy. I believe in support systems. Uh, I like to be in rooms with people that's gone through the same shit I've gone through instead of someone who's never been through it telling me what to do. That's kind of how I look yeah. at it. But all the stuff I've been through uh, with trauma, everything, um, being so anxious all the time, micro dosing is the best thing ever. My anxiety, it went from on a scale of one to a hundred from constantly being at an 80 to 90 to where I almost have no anxiety anymore. Okay. Then that's right up my alley. Yeah. I, it's so I, good. I struggle with horrible anxiety. Yeah. Like really I can, bad. I just where even like I have to drive through Atlanta to get to Nashville and I hate Atlanta traffic. It is the fucking worst on the planet. I used to have both hands on the wheel clinched mm -hmm. to where damn near heart attack mode. Like now just carefree. Like it's, it, they make, like you have realizations on it without getting high. Like now, if you do like, if you eat a lot and you trip ass, now that's, that's different. Like you're going to see some shit, but you like even, even next, yeah, no shit. Like even ne <laughs> next week, uh, I'm doing a psilocybin trip, a professional psilocybin trip. And it's supposed to like everything that bad has ever happened to you. You're supposed to come to peace with it. And it's supposed to roll down off your back by the time you get done. Like you're, it's it's supposed to be so healthy. Uh, I'm big into Dude, reading. That shit scares me because I feel like there's probably some fucked up shit that like happened when I was a kid that's just pushed so far down that I don't remember. That's gonna come up, and I don't want to do that. But think of it like this though, because this is what mushrooms do. If you do have something like that, it makes you come to terms with it, and then it never has that control of you again. That's what it does. So like if you, and if you want like more information on it, there's a documentary on Netflix. It's called how to change your mind. The second episode there's only like four episodes, but the second episode is on psilocybin. Um, it is, there's a woman on there. She's 78 years old. She's going through cancer and she's just like, she reads about psilocybin. She, she reads about it. They give this woman who is because she says somewhere in the documentary or in the article I read that she says the cancer's not killing me, my depression and anxiety is. And she does this treatment. And when after it, she's at peace. She knows now that, hey, if this gets the best of me, it does. I need to enjoy the rest of my life and my family while I'm here. And I don't need to be worried about my family afterwards. Uh, I know with mine, I've always been scared to death of flying. I've never flew. And I'm flying next month now because of like, I, it has made me realize I could walk out my door and drop dead right now of a heart attack because life mm -hmm. is so fragile. Why am I scared of getting on a plane? Yeah. like It, it makes you have realizations about yourself. And I'm yeah. telling you, it is, woo, I would tell anybody it's, it's, and you don't get high. Like it's not like a, a weed high, a THC high or anything like that. It is where you're buzzed. You got like a good little, but hell, I've been doing this show with y'all now for 45 minutes and I ate a 300 milligram an hour <laughs> before we started because of the package this company just sent me just got here. And it just, it really does make you better at a lot of stuff. It, I mean, I, it's, it's fucking weird. Is the still the thing that you're trying? Is it like ayahuasca? Kind yes. Of thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So like, there's a, also a thing, if you can watch it on real sports, uh, HBO, uh, it's November of 20. I found it yesterday for everybody, but, um, MMA fighters and NFL football players are notorious for concussions. It is the yeah. only thing that they have found a high waska treatment or psilocybin is the only thing that refires synapses in your brain it is the only thing that repairs your brain. I think because, and this is, I'm a conspiracy theory nut and just a weird fucker. Uh, we came from the earth, in my opinion, like one way or the other, like we've had to evolve with the earth. Fungus has been around us our whole lives. Like, yeah. I think fungus helps the brain because our bodies are so used to it. I think that we are genetically in tune with it. Like I used to not believe in like vibrations and all that shit. I thought it was dumb as hell. Anytime <laughs> a white bitch tried to give me a crystal, I wanted to cuss her out. <laughs> But now, Don't but now, me, okay. <laughs> but now it's like, now it's like, okay, kind of, kind of get it a little bit. Have you ever, okay, so like conspiracies, high vibrations and stuff like that. Cause I'm a little weird too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. what? What? Nothing. Just I'm not like, looking great. at all the crystals. Like, that are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like, and it's, 
it's not that I fully believe in everything, you know. Yeah. But I'm have you ever watched? It's fine. I'm not basic white bitch. I'm complicated. It's okay. Me and my daughter are probably the most basic white bitches on the world now. <laughs> I had a iced milk coffee before we started this shit. And I and I could look at my younger, think of my younger self and be like, I would beat my ass right now. It's good. <laughs> right. It I is watched, good. I watched one of your videos last night. I don't know if it was her. I'm guessing it was like she was younger. You y'all were like at like a fair or something. Yeah. And you were like, "Why are we leaving?" And she and she said something about it smells like poor people. And yeah. you go, "How do you know what poor people smells like?" And she goes, "I live with you." And I was like, "Oh my fucking god, Grace. that is going to be yeah our child." Mm -hmm. she Gracie, will come for you. Gracie has no filter. Like the women yeah. in my life, like whether it's somebody I work with, just friends with, or whatever, or anybody I've tried to date, they're not scared to be around me. They're fucking petrified because Gracie has no <laughs> chill. Like she will go for your throat. I literally first time I hung out with this girl from social media and it was just a show. It wasn't a date or no like She was just on the show. I picked Gracie up from school that day to come back to the studio and hang out in the back while we were recording. And we went to go to some store or whatever. I had to get some shoes for the beach. And this girl had on a tight pair of shorts and these American flag boots Gracie roasted her to the point <laughs> to where this woman was like, I don't even want to do the show now. Like your kid, <laughs> your kid has talked so much shit Savage. about me. Like, it's just like, I'm sorry. She's a dick. I don't know what to tell you. She's yeah. mean as fuck, but I and would rather. Like, I'm the same way too. Like I, I can't hide shit. Like if, even if I don't say it, my face is going to like, my face is going to say it. Yeah. And I just, there is no filter. I'm just, I'm either going to be quiet or I'm just going to say it. Yeah, I feel like he's made me calmer. Used to, I would just, I didn't oh. care who you were. Like, I would just tell you that looks like shit. I mean, I think part of it too is like real estate. You kind of have to swallow yeah. real hard and just bite down and just kind of get through the grit with some of these people that you work with. And so like, that's kind of helps, but uh, still called your stepdad an asshole. When he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> step he's, not that step, he's not a stepdad anymore. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck you, bitch. There you uh, go. Yeah. I mean, there's a time and a place, but her for real, she she's gonna give us a run for our money mm -hmm. or bail bonds. I think y'all be fine. Her. It's obvious that y'all are good dads, and usually, even with stuff like that, it's where your kid takes the best qualities of both. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get yeah. some of the bad. Like every time I want to tell Gracie to shut the hell up, the thing that just like the comment she just said some shit i'd say or i'm over there in the back of my head <laughs> yeah. being like that was fucking good like yeah. <laughs> i'm really mad she, that i didn't say it first she can cuss perfectly i know that's not we don't encourage her but like yeah. we're not like encouraging telling her to like because say now, fucking stuff but we say it all the time yeah. say like oh shit so thank god for bluey because now we all say oh biscuits sometimes but <laughs> you'll, you'll hear her run off and she's like oh biscuits and i'm like hey at least you're using it properly yeah you know? But um, something the other day went wrong. She goes, what the fuck? And I was like, what are you? What the fuck in? Like, quit with the fuck already. And he looks at me and he goes, how many times did you just say yeah. fuck? And I was like, mind your fucking business. Okay. So yeah. now she at least tells us to stop saying the word. And I'm like, yeah, she's what? like, stop saying fuck. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like you stop saying it. Now, now we at least caught it. You know? Yeah. But yeah, Gracie's uh, never had a problem with that, but she likes to give you the finger. Like she's real bad at that. Like, We've me and her have both gotten trouble at her school for doing it to each other, <laughs> like at a pep rally. I haven't. I, don't teach her. I almost taught her that one day, and I was like, "That's not. That's probably not gonna be the best because I'm constantly yeah, she'll flipping. use it everywhere. Yeah, she'll enjoy it. Yeah. It's fun. I enjoy it. Like I use it all the time. It is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes us laugh. I mean, it's a it's mm -hmm. a funny thing that doesn't matter who you see or or why you're seeing them at the time. This right here is all I need to tell you, and it can mean I love you. It can mean go yeah. fuck yourself. It can mean everything. It can just mean how are you exactly. doing today? Yeah. yeah. It's a love language. I, th I think I it's mean. a love language. Yeah. yeah. If I'm just kind of like, ah, fuck, it means that. But if I'm like, that's like, fuck yeah. you, like, and your mom. Yeah, that's road rage shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen that face before in the mirror. Yeah. It, I, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Absolutely. Fucking lately. <laughs> oh. So what, uh, I got to ask y'all like with the adoption process and everything, like, was that hard for oh, you guys? 
Well, it was so, it was a fucking mess. Yeah, it, it was one like COVID quarantine, whatever that that prolonged it a lot, just because like court systems were like shut down yeah. and then backlogged. But because we didn't go through an agency, like our ours was private a private adoption. It was not. We were working on like getting with an agency to like adopt in like a year or two. She was born on our three month anniversary. Uh-huh. We were married yeah. Mar- uh, March March 9th. She was born June 9th. Okay. So it was uh, like we were married for three months when uh, she was born. So it was not like where we were going, but and we got a call. And when we got the call, it was at 31 weeks that birth mom found out she was pregnant. At so, 31 weeks, she found out? Yeah. Shit. And, and, I mean, she could have possibly not known, or maybe it was just, like, an avoidance of it. Yeah. And, obviously, like, at that, well, back in 2019, at that point in time, it was too late for an abortion. I don't know why I'm, like, screaming my words like I'm on TikTok. Yeah, well, yeah. I, trust me, I make, <laughs> I make all abortion jokes on here all the time. You're fine. Like, you, don't right, have so, to, you don't have to censor anything. So, basically, like, it was too late for her to get an abortion and then she stopped and was like, well, what do I do? Yeah. Because she didn't have any insurance or healthcare or anything like that. We had to get like so many things in order real fast. Well, she knew, she knew that she was not in the position to raise a child and mm-hmm. she didn't want to bring a child into her, the situation that she was in. So she knew that it was the best thing. So I got a phone call from my friend because I went to high school with her. And then our, we have a mutual friend that actually was like, hey, you know, I don't know. I know y'all want this, but do y'all want this right now? Y'all just got yep. married. Um, and I was like, okay, well, one, what? Like, hold on, I gotta like <laughs> soak this in. Like, you, a baby? Like, what? Like, we, we're not, we were not kid ready, I don't think. Yeah, and we had yeah. so much going on at the time, too. No yeah, one's ever kid just, ready, just so you know. There's oh, not a yeah, single no. fucking person that is. That yeah. ended up being the thing that kind of like was made our mind. Yeah. Moment. We had said it. We 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 like we didn't really tell very many people. We, we told one of our friends, and we were just like, 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 are we ready? And one of our friends had a kid, and she was like, "You can have every fucking thing you would ever need." She was, "You were never. No one's ever ready." Mm-mm. Like you don't know, like being a first time parent, you don't know. I don't, I don't know how anybody could prepare. You can't other than having items, but as far as like being ready, it's it, there's no such thing. Yeah, I so just hearing that was kind of like took away the fear yeah. of like, are we ready? And then we just we finally like once we spoke to an attorney and stuff like that, because obviously we wanted to make sure that we don't get ourselves in trouble. Yeah, because um, you have to be really careful. Like you can't do anything you can't yeah. buy lunch you can't like buy gifts yeah you can't like do that. nothing because it could be considered buying a baby i thought there were people that paid for surrogates though that that's it's different that's yeah. different okay it's different because yeah and you're... there's still legal things that they're allowed to pay for with that like as far as medical and yeah and what have you but and so we just wanted to make sure like that we weren't doing anything and like we obviously wanted to go about it legally too like we weren't just trying to have her pop a kid out and just hand it to us and trying with birth certificate like we found a kid you know yeah so we had an attorney um and so we did all that we were there like we've had her since her first cry yeah like the moment she was born we were outside of the door when she like did her first cry they instantly took her put her in a thing and like brought her out like to us at birth mom's um wishes she was so nice back then <laughs> oh yeah it's a head full of hair like yeah Oh, you're talking about the baby. I thought you meant the yeah, birth yeah. mom. Oh, okay. no, no, I, I took that no. wrong. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, when I was you like, said that, I, her, I, I paused for a second too, and I was like, oh, he's talking about her. Yeah. She yeah. Was I was like, I was like, what the? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, it's really cool seeing y'all light up about it. I want y'all to know that. Like, as, yeah. as a dad, I know that feeling right there. And it's yeah. just really cool. It's like, there's a lot of dads in this world. Um, I'm not saying it's a huge percentage, but we all know deadbeat dads and moms. Mm-hmm. How we all do. And it's just really cool seeing y'all just light up the way you do. When yeah. you got yeah. it. it reminds me of me with Gracie. It's, I love seeing it. I will say that's one thing out of, like, obviously, like, I love him to death. But that that girl, this little child, this uh, whole-ass human literally has been the greatest moment. Even though she drives me totally insane, 
Like, I want to pull my hair out. I want to run away some days. But I'm like, she changed her whole entire fucking world. Yeah. And our shop wouldn't exist if it wasn't for her. And just, like, basically all of this is the reason why is her. Um, like, that's why we work so hard. That's why we do what we do. And I don't like it. And she enjoys it, too. Like, she, like, as far as, like, when if she wants to do a video, sometimes we're like, okay, well, we can't do that sound. But... You know, like we'll do a video together that she wants to do, or something yeah. like that. But but we don't post her much, just yeah. Because there's fucking weirdos. But yeah, know, she just makes you like having a kid makes you a better person because like you have like there's. Well, yeah, it makes you, you care. Else to, yeah. It really makes you, for the first time in your life, care about somebody besides yourself. Like yeah. even even if you're in a relationship, you're always gonna have your self interest at at heart. Like you're always yeah. gonna do what's best for you until you have a kid, and then all of a sudden. If you're a good parent, it's fuck me today. What is this? What yeah. do I? What am I supposed yeah. to do for this youngin? Literally, yeah, exactly. And like I, and it also like kind of helps you see life through a different lens. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, as far as like raising her, obviously I want her to be a good human, but I also don't want her to take shit. You know, like yeah, like defend yourself. You know, well, I catch a lot of shit the way that I raise Gracie, uh, because I, she's in gifted. She's the top of her class. She's a good athlete. She's a good kid. She's funny. Like she's, she checks off every box. She's beautiful. Uh, but, like, I don't let her deal with situations like every other parent. Like, if some kid is fucking with my kid, I tell Gracie, hey, if they won't stop after you've asked them politely, mm -hmm. you do what you got to do, and I'll come up there with you. And especially, I don't know if y'all know this, yet you'll hate little boys – by the time that young and is 10, because you see how fucking nasty we were growing up. And now, yeah. now that my daughter's 12 and there's little boys texting her and shit, let me mm. tell you, I am not the most intimidating person in the world, but I got tattoos and a beard and bald head at every school event I go to that I know I'm going to see these little bastards at. I wear a cutoff. <laughs> I'm trying my best to look mean as fuck because I'm, I'm going to have to kill a kid. I already yeah. know it. Like it. Ugh. But raising your your little girl to be that way, when she starts showing, I'm not gonna take shit from a man or a woman yeah. or whoever. It's a proud moment knowing that mm -hmm. you're not gonna have a, a victim as a daughter. You're not gonna have somebody that puts themselves in a bad situation. You can't control everything, of course. Yeah, right. But you, when your kids like, no fuck you, get out of my house. Like, there's a lot of women and men that have dealt with domestic violence. I yeah. don't think with Gracie, I'd ever have to deal with. It. I think if any man ever even puts a hand on her or whatever, Gracie's probably going to get the domestic violence charge. Like she's yeah. probably going to bust her ass, and then she's going to leave because she knows she can do better. And you raising exactly. your youngin like that—that's dude, that's fuck, that's way it ought to be. And, yeah. and too like a, a part of that stems from like my ex, for example. It took me seven and a half years to leave this dude. Right? Yeah, and I want her to always like, I guess, be strong enough, mindful enough to where like if she knows it's wrong and it's bad or if we're like okay here's the signs because sometimes you just ignore all the red flags yeah but i want her to one be able to to know that she can do it all by herself if she wanted to you know yeah, like absolutely don't rely on him i guess you know, yeah or her whatever yeah i i, I don't know. like when i was a kid it was pretty tumultuous like my parents divorced when i was two um and there wasn't really like any nice times like after yeah. that even when they tried to get together so like with her like that's one thing i want her like i want you to be respectful i want you know you to you know do what you gotta do do good but if someone fucks with you just knock them the fuck yourself. out just knock them the fuck out like well i'll come up there and we'll deal with it later yeah like if I, a little bastard's fucking with you punch him like yeah. right in the face yeah there's there's not later. enough there's not enough of that left in the world we got a lot of these helicopter parents now that are just protecting their kid from every aspect of life. And they're not yeah. learning. They're not, they're not yeah. knowing what it's going to be like. Nobody, but when you turn an adult or you become an adult, nobody tells you half the shit you're supposed to know or how you're supposed to deal with it. And if you didn't yeah. lose or you didn't get your ass whooped or you didn't learn all these hard lessons as a child, you're going to suck as an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that's like nail on the head because – so, like, for example, like, we have a prize jar and stuff, and, like, I, I want to do, once she gets a little bit older, because obviously a four-year-old, they're going to do what they want to do. You yeah. Know? 
but I wish I knew how to manage money, credit. <clears throat> Excuse me. All that stuff like before, yeah. Yeah, because like once you're out on your own, yeah. well, like if your parents grew up with bad credit, well, then how do you know how to learn how to fix it, you know, like or take yeah. care of normal life stuff? Mine and, sucks, just so you know. Mine <laughs> is trash. I, <laughs> same. Mine used to be good. Yeah. <laughs> but like you don't know how to deal with it. Like no. I remember my first week of college, there was – literally people at school like just fucking handing out credit cards yeah you know what the hell like i was like cool yeah Swipe. like my dad can't see this let's do it buy a keg on me on yeah. a wednesday yeah like, when i was 18 years old for our senior trip we went to panama i turned 18 in september we graduated in may or whatever between that time i got like three credit cards and i still to this day if they're if I'm not still in trouble for them, I'm still paying for beers from when I was 18 years old down in <laughs> Panama City because I bought everybody's shit because I didn't understand <laughs> at the time. It's like, oh, I think this is free money. I can just mm -hmm. pay it back in a month or two. I didn't tell me it was gonna be five thousand fucking percent interest at the time. Yeah, and I was gonna be paying for shit the rest of my life. That three hundred dollars was gonna is gonna cost you thirty thousand dollars. Damn, <laughs> it, shit, it almost has. Or it's just talk cost me shitty credit along the way. Yeah, it's some bullshit. But no one tells you that shit. No. And my parents like they, I, no one, they don't want to talk about that shit. Like my dad was like, "Here's a checkbook. Like here's how to balance it." What oh. the fuck is credit? Like you get out of school and like oh, here's a credit score. What the fuck is a credit score? No one said that. Yeah. There needs to be like in like high school. There needs to be a legit like taxes credit like this is the shit mortgages this is the shit you're gonna have to fucking do with when you we had like, we had right. economics but economics didn't teach you the shit like like it yeah, taught you yeah. the dumbest shit ever yeah nothing i don't even like remember that. what the fuck it, it taught me but it was nothing that i needed in my life right now yeah and here's a, here we are learning calculus and literally don't even use it well, yeah some I, people do obviously but yeah i didn't they but i also too i think I'm a big advocate for being honest with your kid. So yeah. like I want it to like, I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to use me for example. I don't ever use anybody else growing up. I'm five ten on a good day when my back is not hurting. And that's rare anymore. <laughs> I used to be in really good shape. I was very athletic growing up, but there was no chance even as, as good as an athlete as I was, I was ever going to play in, the, in major league baseball. I was never going to play uh professional football. I, if I got a, a scholarship to go play somewhere, it would have been a low school. Like it had been a, a division three school or whatever, but I was really good at poetry. I was really good at the things I was good. At. I was a very creative and that's what helps me with songwriting and the other stuff that I do is I was very good at those things. The school, nobody tells you, Hey, don't blow your knee out. Don't wreck your shoulder. Yeah. Don't do all this other shit. Like, have fun with it, but don't take it so serious. Let's focus on the thing that you're really good at. Uh, I'll tell you guys a story. Um, when I was in middle school, I got a award for Young Poets of America. I was playing baseball. And when I did, the baseball team called me some very derogatory names. Like, because they announced it on the intercom and all this kind of stuff and everything like this. And it took me... I quit writing poetry. I didn't write another thing because I didn't want to get picked on. I wanted to be the athlete. I wanted to be, oh, that that's cool to do this. I didn't write a single thing again until about a year and a half ago. And I was in Nashville and I told the same story to an organization called Creative Vets that were on the show. If you guys don't know what Creative Vets are in Nashville, you would absolutely love them if y'all want to look them up. But I was telling it to them when they were doing the show together. And one of the guys was like, when we get done with this, let's sit down and write a song. Let's see if you still got that that artistic stuff in you or whatever. And it it makes me so mad that I let some name calling when I was 13 years old keep me from something I was passionate about until I was 34. Yeah. And yeah. I it, it, yeah, I wish that more people with schools would push what you're passionate about and what you can do. Not everybody's going to be a fucking doctor. If you, if you, they should have looked at my dumb ass and be like, there's no sense for you even go to pre-algebra. There's no yeah. use for you to learn a different language. Let's see what you're good at and focus on that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think like there, I was kind of same shit for me. Like, I grew up in a small town. I was not trying to like, if, if, if if I did something and someone was like, you're gay. And I was like, okay, we're, we'll, we'll never do that again. 
We would yeah. never do that again. I was trying to hide that shit as like, I was trying to be in the back of that closet under some shit, under some more shit, like digging down, trying to hide. And I got called Izzy in high school, like Izzy Gay. Stupidest oh. fucking oh, thing. Fucking that's actually kind of good. <laughs> and it, but it literally had nothing to do with me. We had, we had a. Wait, wait. you should have not said that because now it's going to be a thing. <laughs> His fucking reaction. But now I'm old enough. Suck my fucking dick. Like, yeah, there you go. Uh, our high school theater teacher was gay. Yeah. And Is everyone he? said that I looked like him. So since I supposedly looked like this short little weirdo, I was gay. Yeah. I mean, it, I was like, it, like, it was true, but it was like the biggest, are you fucking shitting me? Like, I look nothing like this dude. Yeah. I did not take theater until my senior year of high school. And because yeah. I had to, or I wouldn't graduate. And by that time he had already gotten fired. So it was a new teacher. I wouldn't step foot in anything that had to do with theater or around. I saw him, I would turn around and I would go the other way. Yeah. I, I avoided this motherfucker like the plague. Well, it, because the, people thought I was gay because I looked like. Well, it's that statement that you just said, or the, what you were just talking about. There's one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show. One of the things I try to do is to tell everybody, and this was something I did not understand until I was in my thirties. And I hate this. People have to go so long with it. It doesn't matter what the fuck you do, who you love or whatever, just do it unapologetically. Like there's yeah, too many yeah. people. There's too many people that are just, pushing that shit down making themselves completely uncomfortable to make everybody else comfortable like you're mm -hmm. you're really fucking up your own happiness because you're you don't want to be you and discourage everybody yeah, like and, yeah. it, and it's like fuck that if they if they love you they'll fucking love you and we we've had a lot of different walks of life on this show and i respect that that folks like y'all so much that are just unapologetic about yourself. I want more people to do that. If you're a fucking big weirdo, regardless of what it is, just be a weirdo. It wasn't easy for me like that. Well, like, yeah, John's the thing, like, compared to, like, our generations below us, Yeah, we weren't even able to get married until, what, 2015? Yeah. So, like, we grew up where it was still super taboo. And then my myself, I came out, it's eighth grade going to ninth grade. I was yeah. like, you know what? If we're going to go into high school and have to like, you know, basically what you think of high school is going to be being bullied or whatnot. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to come out now because I was a theater kid. I love theater. Yeah. And basically acting or doing like I did competitions and stuff because um, my dream was to either interior design or be an architect or interior architect. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know why I like it. Um, it's a fidget. Yeah. Um, or I wanted to be an actor if I could ever do it, you know? Um, so I came out, but what benefited for me was every girl in that high school was my best friend. Yeah. So that meant almost all the guys had to respect me enough to even date half the girls. But I mean, it wasn't always like that, but <laughs> I was like, I was completely different than what I am now. I was so overly nice to everyone because I didn't want ever, anyone to get mad and like mm -hmm. think. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to ever, like, I was just don't think it. Like, I didn't want anyone to think it. And I was just, I'm nice. I let people walk all over me like a fucking jackass all the time, like all through high school, all through high school. And then, like, we, when I came out, it wasn't really like my choice. Like, I told a friend, they told a friend who told a friend, and yeah. then everyone found out. After that, everyone I'd been friends with for years, like, quit talking to me. Yeah. And I was like, you shady bitches. I was that like, sucks. all right. I was like, all right. Being nice has gotten me nowhere. Let's well, flip script. And I, I was just, I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to be nice anymore. I became an asshole and people quit fucking with me. Well, like, people quit. I don't think like, it's necessarily being nice doesn't get you. I think being fake gets you absolutely nowhere. And you, yeah. you, you, if you're not being who you really are, you're being fake, not just to everyone around you, but yourself. Yeah. yeah. And so it was, I lost like friends, but then I had a great group of friends that were still left. Like I'm still really close with people from high school, like the girls, yeah. like they were in our wedding. Like I'm still yeah. super close with friends from high school and that just, and they all, it was funny afterwards they were all like we knew yeah, yeah. we knew you were gay <laughs> yeah. and i was like why did none of you bitches tell me yeah did you why did none of you tell me you would have not done that anymore 
one of my best friends was like, she goes, we lived together in college. She goes, why the fuck do you think my parents would let me live with a guy if they did not think you were gay? Because I was scared to tell her parents because I was super close to them. And I was like, and I told her one day, I, said, I don't want to tell your parents. And she goes, my parents know. She was like, I think like everyone knows. So it wasn't really good at hiding it. So that's probably why everybody I, I think it, time. I think it's like a huge, I don't want to say compliment, but I think it's just how somebody, how much somebody loves you. That it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, cause we all know people like that. I mean, we, we yeah. all do. We, you can tell like, and yeah. it doesn't matter. I, I don't matter I what hate- you do. I, I'm still going to love you fucking regardless. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why some exactly. people are so hung up on it. Because some people, some people don't. don't I got in, regardless. I got into a lot of trouble one day on country radio. So, uh, there was an artist this, they're called the how the highway women. Um, or the high women, I can't remember which one it is, but lead singer is Brandy Carlisle. Brandy Carlisle's open lesbian. I love her music so fucking much. One of the songs that they have on an album is called If She Ever Leaves Me. And the song, uh, y'all know who Jason Isbell is? Jason, y'all ever heard the song that Morgan Wallen sings called Cover Me Up? Yeah. Okay, Jason Isbell wrote that song for his wife while he was in rehab. His version of it, 10,000 times better than Morgan Wallen's. But Jason Isbell is just an amazing songwriter. His fucking shit is amazing. Uh, he's very deep. But he wrote this song for his wife, who's in the band The High Women, and it's an openly gay country song. And the whole song is talking about, hey, cowboy, if she ever leaves me, it won't be for you. She likes the smell of perfume, not cologne. Like, it's a, it's a great written song. It's fucking beautiful. Played it on radio. And you had these old fucking just stuck in their ways, people calling in or whatever. And uh, I was like, I don't know what y'all's problem is. This is a this fucking beautiful song. I absolutely love mm-hmm. it. And then yeah. somebody smarted off to me on like live radio. And they was like, well, what would you do if your daughter turned out to be gay? And I was like, why the fuck does it matter? If she did, I'd be happy for her. And then they said some slick shit to me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be crude here for a second. So y'all don't, don't take this the wrong way. I, I said, and I got a lot of trouble. I was like, if I wanted to go suck dick tomorrow, I'd go suck dick tomorrow. And I'm going to be unapologetic about it. It's none of your fucking business. Exactly. Like, wh- why does it matter what I do? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, a li- that, I'm living my life. That's what I've always said. It, it, who I am fucking in, whatever I'm doing, it's none of your business. Like, you're. Well, I mean, it technically it would be my business. Well, not you, but like before you, like <laughs> wait, before you, because I was never in relationships. Like yeah. it, Travis is my, my first serious relationship. And so I was like, whatever I am doing in my bed ain't none of your motherfucking yeah. business. Like, yeah. Why are you worried about, about it anyhow? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll go and tell you, if I wasn't obsessed with women the way that I am, I have a problem. I've let the same thing ruin my life since I was 18 <laughs> years old. <laughs> like every, every decision ever. Yeah, every decision I've <laughs> ever made in my life was so I could get my next piece of ass. To be if I, <laughs> if it was a shirt, if it was a car or whatever, is this gonna lead me to the next woman that's gonna let me sleep with her or whatever? <laughs> if not, this right here is what the fuck I would want. This but you what y'all got. This is cool as shit to me. It's not, it's really not that different, I will tell you. Yeah. See. I can, well, see it, I can see it out of my peripheral. I can see that fucking side. Oh, it cut. I'll tell you, that, shit, that shit cuts, bro. I can see it. It Dora. really does suck. I'm not going to lie. Because it's, he doesn't it's... clean up after himself. Like, I would probably rather go date a woman because she's more than likely, although it may not work, you know? That but is why two women pick up. That is why women leave me, by the way. I didn't realize that cleaning up shit is so mm-hmm. important. And now I'm trying to learn it. So I'm not the problem. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize what an issue that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that nightstand. But but anyway, I cleaned it off the other day. But right. I just want to tell y'all before we get off here, what y'all do, I really respect it. The this everything, what you're putting out into the world is what I mean. Like, thank you. Th- thank th- you. Th- this is more shit that I want to see. I want people, regardless of your what your religious beliefs, political beliefs, sexual beliefs, whatever. I don't care. I just want you to be respectful. To, to other people and I want you to just show love and be fucking nice and be positive. The world needs more of that. There's there's yeah. not en- there's not enough people that I don't think that you think that your opinion on your lifestyle is any more important than mine. I right. think that we both value each other's opinion and respect each other. And that's just exactly. what I want everybody to be. And there needs to be more yeah. conversations between different walks of life that are put out there. A lot of a lot of people think I am a pig because of the, I'm a pig. But I also can respect people that are like you are some folks I would love to sit down and drink a fucking beer with and just hang out with. And yeah, there's, there's too there's too much division. 
And like the yeah. more that we do stuff like this, the the better off I think we'll all be. And I'm honestly, like even you doing this, I I was fucking shocked. Yeah, I will not lie to you. When you message us, I was fucking shocked because I, 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 yeah, I'm. I guess it was the same way. I was kind of like he just, he does like pretty like music people, pretty girls, and like big tits. Like we don't I do like one of those. I'm a big fan of. All so, like, I like. All I was like, we don't have either one of those. And so I was like, I went and looked to make sure it was actually your account. Yeah. After like I read it, because I was like, but weird. see, like, but no. that that's exactly what kind of like what he was just saying is yeah. You instantly judged versus. Not you judge, but I, I still like, just think like when people ask us to do things like this, I'm just like, are you sure you know who you're talking to? Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> well, I, I don't see like us in that. I don't know. Like it just, it's always shocking. You're and a very so, good at, you're a very good example of happiness to me. And that, and that's what I want to put out. Like, I don't want to do toxic shit on my show. I don't want to do uh, drama on my show. I don't want to yeah. sit here and just be little the way other people live their lives. I won't. In all honesty, when we first started the studio uh, within the first year, there's a guy from the town over. Everybody in that town, and it's the town I grew up in, hates this dude because of his religious beliefs, his political beliefs, sexual beliefs, all that shit, right? I posted on social media one day, I want somebody to come in and do a show that's a completely different walk of life for me. Uh, I don't know what he identifies as as far as his sexuality, but he's marrying or married to someone who's transitioning from a male to a female. It is one of my absolute favorite fucking shows that I've ever done. I'm like at 460 now. And it's because we respected each other. And even though we hardly agreed on any fucking thing, it was where, hey, let me. It's so, it's hard for me to define passion in somebody to define yeah. what passion is to you, and when you see somebody that can be respectful and they're just as passionate about their beliefs as I am as mine, and we can have a conversation, well, it almost kills all the bullshit you see on social media yeah. of the yeah. two sides battling. It's like, no, this is not the fucking way the world is. You're looking at the bullshit on social media. Exactly. So let's put out yeah. some good shit on social media that shows how folks really interact and how we would yeah. really talk to each other if we was around each other. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I agree with that. Because, I mean, I, you can think what you want to think and just be respectful. Like, yeah, we can sit down and we can have a beer or, you know, you can go down the road. Yeah, exactly. But I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna have a beer, so you can join or you cannot. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna let you bother me. Is the thing. And yeah. if you're a good person, I, I say it all the time. Like I, I, I don't do organized religion anymore, and there's a couple reasons why. And one of the biggest ones is because I know that there's been churches I've went to that if you guys walked in with your kid, they'd be they'd look at you weird or they'd act funny to you, and never would the get church a I grew up in wouldn't allow yeah. it. Yeah, and there's no way the good Lord don't love y'all. Y'all are good folks taking care of a young and you act the right way. If you tell me that I got to pick some uppity old bitch that's going to frown on you guys or I got to pick you guys, I'm going to pick you guys. You're the ones that aren't judgmental. I mean, as you should, because fuck that old bitch. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> them. If they're not going to be welcoming, I know you guys are. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. drop y'all social media and let's get the hell out of here. I got to get my kid. Uh, it's the same everywhere. So it's the girl, dads, girl, singular. Dads, dads is plural. plural. Cause we're gay. Yeah. Gay. You don't say, uh, yeah. Yeah. a lot of people will say the girl's dad. Yeah. You no, know, there's one girl, two dads. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank y'all so much. I really enjoyed thank this you for conversation. Having us. So Any, we... Anytime y'all want to do it again, we'll, we'll hang out. Hell yeah. Thank Hell you. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, folks. Well, thank y'all tuned into the Josh Terry podcast. I will holler at y'all later.